Okay, hello and welcome everyone. In this video, I'm gonna explore the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. I'll talk about the best reply correspondence and some of the logic, and then I will examine what happens to the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium when you change the payoffs of one of the players. So, okay, here's the game that I'm going to analyze. So suppose we have two players, one choosing rows, one choosing columns. This row player has strategies of up or down. The column player has strategies of left or right. And then we have our four corresponding strategy profiles. Up left, which yields payoffs 4-1. Four, 4 going to row player, 1 going to column player. Up right, which yields payoffs of 0-0. Zero, zero. Down left, again yielding payoffs of 0-0. Zero, zero. And then down right, yielding payoffs of 1-4. So we want to find the, the peer uh, strategy Nash equilibrium. So in peer strategies, when players only use one strategy, we want to find the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. Matter of fact, like any game has to have at least one Nash equilibrium. And if there's no peer strategy Nash equilibrium, it's got to be a mixed strategy. And then we want to draw the best reply correspondence. Okay, so the first thing is I will, I will find the two peer Nash equilibria by best response method. And so here I've underlined, but let me kind of explain what's going on here. So the first thing I do is I'm going to take the perspective of my row player. And I'm going to think, OK, I could use up or down. What happens, hypothetically, if column player has chosen left? What's my best response as row player? Oh, if column player chooses left, row player's best response is up. So row's best response to left, row's best response of row player to left. That's what this notation is saying. This is best response notation. This is going to be up. Why? Well, because 4 is bigger than 0. So if column player, column player chooses left, row player better choose up because 4 is bigger than 0. So if underlined 4. Okay, well, what if column player were to choose right? So row's best response to right, row's best response of row player to right is down because one is bigger than zero. So I've indicated that there. Now I'll take the perspective of column player and we'll say, all right, well, suppose row player has chosen up. What's column player's best response? Well, column player's best response to up is left because one is bigger than zero. And then column player's best response to down, column player's best response to down is going to be right because four is bigger than zero. Right? Notice when I'm finding best responses, what I'm doing is I'm saying, what is the player's best response to what the co-player has done when taking into consideration only that own player's payoffs, right? So here, where I was determining row player's best response to left, and I said it was up, I said it was because four is bigger than zero. Notice I completely ignored the other payoffs. None of the other payoffs in the game were relevant. Why? Because we're thinking specifically when column player has chosen left, row player then wants to choose up. And then also, we actually don't care about column player's payoff at all. Right now, we're just determining row player's best response. And then down here, we are choosing column player's best response. So here, we're ignoring row player's payoffs. And we're comparing only column player's payoffs. Okay, that's like essential to determining how to find Nash equilibria by the best response method. Indeed, these are Nash equilibria. Two underlines in a cell indicates the presence of a Nash equilibrium. Nash equilibrium is defined as a situation where no player wants to switch alone. So the more precise definition is that a strategy profile is a Nash equilibrium if no player has a profitable unilateral deviation. What that means is if, if we're at, for instance, up left, that is a Nash equilibrium. That strategy profile of up left is a Nash equilibrium because no one wants to switch alone. If column player is choosing left, row player doesn't want to switch to down because they get zero instead of four. If row players is already choosing up and column players at left, column player doesn't want to switch to right because they would go from one to zero. But of course, that's exactly like how we found these. Uh, this as a Nash equilibrium in the first place was by determining where they're best responding. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to find the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. So what we need to do is we need to determine the probabilities with which each player is going to use their respective strategy on the understanding that they're going to pick their mixture so as to keep their co-player indifferent, right? So for instance, row player is going to choose alpha, which is the probability with which row player uses up. And then the probability one minus alpha is the probability with which row player uses down. So as to keep column player indifferent between left and right, right? So row player is choosing alpha. It's choosing its mixture over up and down in order to keep column player indifferent between left and right. So here's how this works. Column player is going to choose left when? Well, when does column player choose left? Column player chooses left when the payoffs from 1 times alpha plus 0 times 1 minus alpha exceed the payoffs from 0 times alpha plus 4 times 1 minus alpha. That's this down here. So this is 
This is column players' possible payoffs when choosing left. This is when this is the payoff to choosing left for column player when row player chooses uh, chooses up, and then when row player chooses down, with some probability. And then this is column players' payoffs from choosing right. That's what's on, over on the right-hand side. So this is their zero with probability alpha, and then four with probability one minus alpha. And you can do this calculation. So okay, this simplifies nicely. We have alpha here. This goes away. We have a zero here. This is four minus four alpha. Good. Move this over. We have five alpha. This is a four. So when alpha is bigger than four fifths, then column player will choose left. When alpha is equal to four fifths, column player is indifferent. So row player's mixed strategy Nash equilibrium is going to be playing up four fifths of the time and playing down one fifth of the time. And that's what's necessary to keep column indifferent between left and right. What about column? Well, column's going to choose beta. Column's going to choose beta, which is the probability with which column plays left, so as to keep row player indifferent between up and down. If this up and this down being written here isn't bothering you already, now it will because I pointed it out. It's been bothering me this whole time and I want to go back and switch it, but it's too late. So, okay, so column chooses beta to keep row indifferent between left and or between uh, up and down. I can't see behind my microphone. <laughs> row chooses up when? Well, row chooses up when their payoffs from choosing up exceed their payoff from choosing down. So what's row player's payoff from choosing up? It's four with probability beta plus zero with probability one minus beta. What's their probability, what's their payoff with choosing down? It's zero with probability beta plus one with probability one minus beta. So that's row's payoffs here. 4 with probability beta, 0 with probability 1 minus beta, and then 0 with probability beta plus 1 with probability 1 minus beta is row's payoffs from choosing down. This is row's payoffs from choosing up. Row chooses up. Row chooses up when beta is greater than 1 fifth. When column is playing left more than a fifth of the time, row player is going to choose up. If you're staring at the payoffs, that's, so, that's totally natural, right? If we really think that column player is shading towards left, of course row player is going to shade towards up because that four is bigger than this, the one. Okay, so column's mixed strategy Nash equilibrium is gonna be one fifth left plus four fifths right. Okay, now let's find the best reply correspondence. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna get the endpoints of this graph. So we already had those already. We actually determined row player's best response to left was up, row player's best response to right was down, and then we know row player's best response to column's Nash mixture is row's Nash mixture. That's just this from right here. Column's best response to up was left. You can see that in the table. Column's best response to down is right. You can see that in the table. And then column's best response to rows Nash mixture is column's Nash mixture. All right, so now we've got all the endpoints, of the, all the interesting points of the graph we want to draw. Uh, I'm going to translate this best response of left equals up and best response of right equals down into our alpha beta probabilities. So remember, alpha is the probability with which row player plays up. So if row player is best responding by choosing up, that's equivalent to saying alpha is going to be 1, playing up with certainty. If row player's best response is down, that's equivalent to saying alpha is 0, so that's playing down with certainty. right? And then so on and so forth for column player's best response and row player's best response. So when alpha is 1 or alpha is 0, those are our peer strategy. And I'm going to put this on our best response correspondence. So now you're like, what is this? <laughs> OK, so here we have alpha, right? So this is probability alpha ranging from 0 to 1. Here we have beta. So alpha is the probability with which alpha is the probability with which, which, with which row player chooses up. And beta is the probability with which column player chooses left. So when alpha and beta are both one, that ought to pick out strategy profile up left. Indeed, that's how I've labeled it. When alpha is zero and, and beta is zero, that should pick out strategy profile down right. So I've labeled this. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, we have to get from zero to one. So let's start shading along the axis and then we're going to get to some break point this is going to correspond to our nash strategy and so i've labeled this as four fifths and then i've gone up here i've made this one fifth over and up and i've labeled this point four fifths one fifth this is the point where alpha right this is the alpha axis this is the point where alpha is four fifths where row players playing up with four fifths probability and where the beta coordinate is one fifth where column players playing is playing is playing uh, left with one-fifth probability. This indeed is going to be our mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. So our three Nash equilibria are labeled on our
best reply correspondence. So apart from it just being a pretty picture, let's think about the interpretation of this. So this is why it's useful. It's thinking about how changes are going to tip behavior in one direction towards another. So my note here, notice when alpha is bigger than four fifths, when alpha is bigger than four fifths, so for alpha be bigger than four fifths, we're at this portion of the axis, what ends up happening? Oh, then beta jumps up to one. Let's think about that relative to the table. If alpha is bigger than four fifths, that means if row players playing up kind of a lot of the time, what's going to happen more than four fifths of the time, now beta is going to jump to one, right? So what's happening is as alpha rises, the likelihood that row players playing up rises above four fifths, column players all of a sudden realizing this four is increasingly off the table, and I'm playing for this one if I'm column player. So that's why if row player starts playing up with probability greater than four fifths, column player is just going to start playing left, start playing, putting probability greater than one fifth on left. That's what this is saying. Now, if we find out, so this is and, and if alpha is less than four fifths from our best reply correspondence, when alpha is left the, less than four fifths, what's beta? Oh, this is along the beta, is, this is where beta is zero, right? Look, this, this is the beta axis. So this is, this is where our beta coordinate is zero when alpha is less than four fifths. What that's telling us, beta is zero if alpha is less than four fifths. Well, if alpha is less than four fifths, that means that less than 80% of the time, column players staring at this one, and uh, increasingly they're staring at this four if they were to play right. So they, so they decrease the likelihood with which they're gonna play beta, or sorry, with which they're gonna play left, they decrease their likelihood of beta and increase the likelihood on right because they're increasingly playing towards this four. That's what this is saying. And then so on and so forth for when beta is bigger than one fifth, when beta is bigger than one fifth, when column player starts playing left more than a fifth of the time, that's enough to make row player jump over. So alpha becomes one, right? This is right here is where alpha is one when beta is bigger than one fifth. So this means as beta gets, is as column player starts playing left more than a fifth of the time, row player jumps over to playing up more than uh, more than four fifths or with, with certainty, right? And that gets us to this up left equilibria. Okay, so very cool. The next thing I want to do is I want to say, okay, let's sort of explore our intuition with mixed strategies a little bit more. And so I've got a variation to the game. Notice this is the same game as before, right? Look at our payoffs. Four one zero 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 one four. That's this. I just copied the picture and I changed something. I changed this zero to a two. And how does the game change? Well, let's take a look at it. Changing columns playoff, playoff, playoffs. Changing columns payoff to left when row chooses down uh, from zero to two doesn't affect the pure strategy Nash equilibrium, right? It's not going to affect the pure strategy Nash equilibrium. Look at this. These underlines are still valid. It doesn't even make, so I had to make this two and not like five because that would make, uh, that, would, that, would kind of, uh, that would kind of change, that kind of change things a little bit. Namely, it would give column, if this was bigger than four, this would give column player a dominant strategy to play left. So I had to keep this between zero and, well, ideally between like, uh, between like zero and three or something like that. Um, okay, so, but changing columns payoff here doesn't affect the peer strategy Nash equilibrium, and it also does not affect column's choice of beta. It's not gonna affect column's choice of beta, why? Yeah, this is column's payoff. However, column's choosing beta to keep row indifferent. So column chooses beta to keep row indifferent between up and, up and down. So row chooses up when, and this is just the work from before. So column's mixed strategy in that mixed Nash equilibrium strategy is still one fifth playing left a fifth of the time and right four fifths of the time because changing this payoff doesn't affect uh, rows indifference. However, in big letters, it does affect rows choice of alpha because it affects columns outcome between up and down, right? When, when this changes from zero to two, this affects columns outcome between rows choice of up or down when column chooses left, right? So row chooses alpha to keep column indifferent and forget about this, like what you just saw, I'm gonna actually not show that. Um, that'll be a different video. So row chooses alpha to keep column indifferent. Column chooses left when, well, this is gonna be columns payoffs from choosing left when row chooses up, and then columns payoffs from choosing right when row chooses, or sorry, not when row chooses up. This is columns payoffs from choosing left. It's gonna be, it's gonna be uh, one times alpha plus two times one minus alpha. 
Column's payoffs from choosing right are zero times alpha, four times one minus alpha. So it's gonna be one times alpha plus two times one minus alpha, zero times alpha plus four times one minus alpha. Okay, so this is this is just alpha. This is two minus two alpha. This is zero, that goes away. This is four minus four alpha. Move this to the other side. Wait, or don't. So we have first cleanup. This is gonna be minus alpha. This is gonna be two minus alpha. It's bigger than four minus four alpha. Okay, now move this to the other side, three alpha three alpha, and then this is two. When alpha is bigger than two thirds, then row choose, uh, the column chooses left. When row plays, plays up more than two thirds of the time, column chooses left. When row chooses up exactly two thirds of the time, column's indifferent between left and right. So row's Nash equilibrium strategy is now two thirds up, one third down. Column's Nash equilibrium strategy is still one fifth left and four fifths right. What's driving these numbers? Well, these right here, because we have two strategies, sum to one, these right here, sum to one. However, the relative weightings be between these are just to keep the rival indifferent. So what we just found is with these new payoffs, if rho chooses up more than two thirds of the time, that's enough to pull column to, to playing left. However, if rho's playing down, um, what, more than a third of the time, that's enough to keep rho choosing right because of the, the attraction of this four here right anyway so i think that's i think that's actually really useful to see especially in comparison between this game and the previous one to see how change how, to see the effect of changing the payoffs of one of the players and to see what changes in the game to kind of get a better understanding and to really take to heart the fact that we are choosing these weightings so as to keep the other player indifferent okay hope you enjoyed the video like subscribe whatever see you later